Scripture Conversations. Sin is a boomerang. Folks will say, yeah, I know that was a sin, but I went ahead and did it anyway because I know my God will forgive me. Okay. They seem to know a lot. They seem to know that God is merciful and gracious. It is written, Exodus 34, 6. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. But what they don't seem to know in that willfully sinning state is that sin is a boomerang. It is written, Numbers 32, 23. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord. And be sure, your sin will find you out. When folks' sins find them out, the sin doesn't just reveal the wicked deed of disobedience against God. Mm -mm. But the sin also brings the consequences that boomerang back in what they reap. It is written. Galatians 6, 8. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting. What better example than to use than myself? There are sins that I committed even years ago before I got the Holy Ghost on July 15, 2012. And before I was saved with my sins washed away, being baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on December 18, 2016. By the grace of God, I repented. By the power of the Holy Ghost, I overcame those sins. It is written, Romans 8, 37. Nay, in all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. But the consequences of my sins that I did even before I was saved still boomerang back and I reap those things that I sow. Case in point. Like a soul that smoked cigarettes for decades. But then by the grace of God, the Lord led him to repentance. He believed and was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. He received the gift of the Holy Ghost speaking with new tongues. And by walking in the Spirit, he overcame those cigarettes and threw those four packs a day in the garbage from that day on. But his lungs are bad now. That's reaping the consequences of the sin. This is not to say that the Lord Jesus Christ cannot heal his lungs, but the bad lungs are a result of the sin of disobedience against the temple of God, even though that man now is saved. It is written, 1 Corinthians 3, 16, 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. There are sins that I, Brother Carl, did years ago, before I was saved, that the Lord Jesus Christ will bring back to my memory even today, such as all the people that I knew that I never witnessed Jesus Christ to them in word or in demonstration of life. I was raised in the church, so I knew better. I should have been living the life of holiness and witnessing the gospel of salvation years ago to those souls. Some of those folks, right now, I don't even have access to. 
and others, the Holy Ghost, right now, won't even let me go around them anymore. It is written, Acts 16 and 6. Now when they had gone throughout Pergia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia. Yet, even though by the tender mercies of God, Brother Carl now is on fire for God, in this very hour, my sins in the past still have consequences to this day. That's why you repent. That's why I repented of them, which means I don't do them no more. So they won't count against me in the judgment. Yet, you still reap what you sow in this life. That's why you repent. See, folks ain't going to see an unholy lifestyle from the man of God, Brother Carl, no more today. Folks are going to hear the gospel of salvation from Brother Carl today. If you want to see a room empty, invite Brother Carl to come to your party. Mm -hmm. Folks will jet out of there like 90 going west. Why? Because I repented. Because I ain't ashamed of the gospel of Christ no more. And I preach and I teach the gospel everywhere I go. And the gospel offends sinners with a stony heart who are not ready to repent. So the room get clear. Because they want to party. And here come the party poop. It is written, Matthew 13, 20, 21. But he that received the seed in the stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and the Lord with joy received it. Yet have he not rooted himself, but dure for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, not because of my deodorant or lack of it, <laughs> but because of the word, by and by, he is offended. Brother Carl ain't trying to fit in with the world and their lust no more. That's repentance. What I used to do against the word of God, I don't do no more. And when folks repent, what they used to do against the word of God, they don't do no more. Because they repent. On judgment day, the penalty will be against all of the folks' unrepentant sins. You're not going to be judged by the sins you repented of. You're going to be judged by the sins that you didn't repent of. You can ask forgiveness for sins, but if you ain't repented of those sins, you're going to be judged by those unrepentant sins. So you must repent. I'll show you a mystery. You can't go back and fix the sins that you already committed. For instance, I had a rollover car accident in 1996 AD. I didn't have on a seatbelt. I was thrown out of the car and broke my neck in two places. The car was upside down, missing the wheel, and was totaled. I can't do nothing about that car. It's broke. It can't be fixed. It was totaled. And it was ready for the scrapyard. So they probably went, I don't know. But it was nobody could drive that car. It was missing a wheel. <laughs> it had three wheels. Not a missing a tire, a wheel. It's from the axle, ripped. So it, it broke. You can't drive. But by repentance, Brother Carl ain't reckless in driving in high speeds and foolishness like that no more. Yet, my neck still got titanium in it. So there are still consequences to sins, even those that you repented of. You still, the wages of sin is death. That's why men die, because all have sinned. Now, because I have repented of that sin, it won't follow me into the judgment. But if I'm still doing unrighteousness behind the wheel of cars, that sin will follow behind me because of disobedience and will boomerang into the judgment 
even if I don't ever have another accident. Mm -hmm. It is written, 1 Timothy 5, 24, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before to judgment. And some men, they follow after. Sin is a boomerang. Repent. Come out of your sins and leave them alone. Don't do no sin, so then it won't boomerang back on you later. It is written, Proverbs 28, 13. He that covers his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confess and forsake them shall have mercy. Ain't nobody get back. It's because of the mercy of God that folks are not consumed. But because folks sin and no judgment is executed on them speedily, then they determine in their hearts that God's forgiveness is enough. That's why they keep on sinning and they don't repent. Ecclesiastes 8.11 Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So what do folks do? They sin and then they ask forgiveness. They sin willfully and then they ask forgiveness. You ain't got to tell me. Mm -hmm. Before I was saved and repented, I was the king of that. Mm -hmm. Brother Carl used to be a so-and-so. I mean, I really was. Thank God he will change. I would know that I was about to sin. I would ask God to forgive me, but I knew that I was about to do. And then go and sin anyway. That's what you call playing with your soul. It is written, Hebrews 10, 26, 27. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall defile the adversaries. But by the grace of God, the Lord showed me that was useless. And unless I repent, mm -hmm, which is to confess and forsake your sin, I and anybody else will perish, which is in hell. It is written, Luke 13, 3, I tell you, nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Those sins will boomerang back on folks in the judgment. Why? Because although God will forgive them, and although God did, forgave them. Unless they repent, which is to stop doing the sin, they will perish, which is in hell. It is written, I tell you nay, but except ye repent, ye shall all likewise perish. Luke 13 and 5. The reason God forgives us is so that we will cease from sin. That's the grace of God. In the dispensation of the law, when folks committed sin, they died right then and there. They didn't have no grace period to repent. Hebrews 10, 28. It is written, he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. This dispensation of the grace of God is giving us mercy and that grace period will live in us now and which is right now in our life, giving us space to repent. Yet, many folks won't repent. They continue in sin thinking grace will abound, which is to cover them, but it won't. Revelation 2, 21, 22. It is written, I gave her space to repent of her fornication and she repented not. Behold, 
I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. Today, we got folks that will say with their mouths, see, God knows that we are just men, male and female, and that we go on to sin. See, God knows we ain't perfect. We just forget it. Mm -hmm. Where's that written at in the Bible? nowhere have you not read have you not heard jesus christ which is god manifest in the flesh tells us to be perfect it is written matthew 5 48 be ye therefore perfect even as your father which is in heaven is perfect god is right so be right like god is lord have mercy Y'all can't be right, can't do right, can't live right, can't act right. They can't be that. You can't be perfect. Perfect mean right. Y'all can't act right. Y'all can't live right. I can't do right. I just got to do wrong. Lord have mercy. You better repent. Have you not read? Has it not been told to you? The scriptures tell us to obey from the heart that form of doctrine, which is the gospel of Christ, so that we will repent and be free from sin. It is written, Romans 6, 17 and 18. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Be then made free from sin. Ye became the servants of righteousness. That's why we need the mind of Christ Jesus. Because with the mind of Christ Jesus, you put your flesh in detox. Your flesh is going to suffer being in spiritual detox. Cold turkey. Because the flesh is weak to sin. It is written, Matthew 26, 41. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation, the spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Yet, with the mind of Christ, through the Holy Ghost, that's why you got to get the Holy Ghost. That's why you got to ask the Lord to give you the Holy Spirit. He'll give it to you, you ask him. You want it. You got to want that gift. Mm-hmm. But with the mind of Christ, you have the power through the Holy Ghost to crucify, which is to kill the flesh and its affections. And with the mind of Christ, through the Holy Ghost, this will result in you ceasing from sin. It is written, 1 Peter 4, 1. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that have suffered in the flesh have ceased from sin. You crucified that flesh. You put it in spiritual detox. You said no to unrighteousness. No to disobedience. The flesh want to say yes. You say sit down. You ain't doing it. Hallelujah, Jesus Christ. Armed with that same mind of Jesus Christ. See, Christ in you tells the flesh, sit down, shut up, don't do it. You ain't going to do it. You won't do it. You ain't going back to Egypt. No, you won't. <laughs> I'm going to make me a captain and go back to Egypt and sit. No, you won't. Sit down. Get the word in you. Here, I'll get a spoonful for you. Thank you, Jesus Christ. On with that same mind of Jesus Christ, then you recognize that sin is a boomerang, so you don't even bother. Yo, know, I throw this sin and think it's going away from me because I asked the Lord to forgive me. That joker coming back. Mm hmm And you don't want it coming back on you. Mm hmm So don't even bother because you don't want the consequences coming back on you in this life or taking the chance that you never get the power over it to repent of those sins and then they follow you in the judgment and causes you to lose your salvation 
in the life to come. It is written, 1 Timothy 5, 24, some men's sins are open beforehand, going before them to judgment, and some men they follow after. Lord, that's why Jesus Christ came in the very beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, preaching the same thing that we are preaching to this very hour. Repent and believe the gospel. Amen and amen.